Hey guys, how's it going? Go Rich here today, and we're going to be doing an oil change on a Mark 6 GTI. This should be pretty easy. I'm just going to warn you, if you've been driving for a long time, don't attempt to do this. You will burn yourself, I guarantee it. So, first thing you're going to want to do, and I always do this because it makes it a little bit easier, is I usually grab the shroud and I lift it out of the way. It's just something to make this a little easier, and then if you make a bit of a mess, it's not so bad. The other reason why you want to do this is you're going to want to clean this out. I usually clean this out a little bit, as you can see, nice and dirty. So take a shop rag, give this a nice wipe, and then from there, what you're going to do, open up your oil cap. If you want, flip that up. As you can see, I'm at my 8500, so I want to definitely clean that up. 8500 kilometers, not miles. And then, as you can see here, we have a tube right here. I'm just going to lift this up and out of the way a little bit because what we're going to do is we're just going to break the seal on this. Now, you can do this with an oil filter wrench or you can try and get it off with your hand. Mine's pretty warm right now, so I'm going to leave it for a second and I'll probably grab a rag for when I twist a little because we're going to not take this completely off. What you want to do is just loosen a tiny bit just so it breaks the pressure that's in there because it makes the next part super easy. After you've done this, we're going to get it you want to jack up your car. Now, before we even start jacking up our car to drain the fluid, you're going to want to make sure you have the right fluid. So as you can see, I have a trusty little oil. There's manual here. And it says castor oil on the cap, but let's say someone put a new cap on her. You're like, I really, I'm not a fan of castor oil. It actually tells you right here on page, I'm going to say 240 to 241 right there, but it says make sure for gasoline engines you have VW, 50400 VW50200. Make sure those two specs are on there. So, what have I done? Well, I went and picked up some Lucas synthetic here. As you can see, they're both right there. VW50200. 50500. There we go. But yeah, they're all right there. So, now that I know I've got all that right there, and it matches right here, we should be good to go. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to make sure that we have is, of course, our new oil filter. I decided to go with a man filter. That's what they had in stock. So, I get to be a man. <laughs> so, at this point, jack up your car. I can show you some quick jacking points. As you can see, I just went off of right there. It's right beside the scissor jack. I never recommend changing oil with the scissor jack for anyone that's asking. And where I jacked it up with the jack itself, it's right behind, let's see if I can get you yeah, a better show in here. Right here, right behind the tire, there's a spot. This flap, you'll see a flap there. That's where I put the jack, jacked it up there. Put on the jack stands right here. And once you have it jacked up, let's jump underneath the vehicle. See that bolt? As soon as you, let's go from the front. See I'm under the grill, right from under the front. You'll see the engine right here, and look at right here. This is your bolt. We just gotta loosen this one off. So let me see what size it is. I'll let you know, get my drain pan ready. Let's drain some fluid. Take a 19 millimeter socket, put it on here, and remember righty tighty lefty loosey. Just loosen it up, and then you're gonna slowly I've already loosened this and again do this with gloves. I'm just gonna probably put an extension on here and loosen this a little bit a little bit more but it's just like this as you can see bolts out it's draining and if we roll over I'll put the bolt right there so I can just make sure my threads stay nice and clean because that is definitely a bolt you don't want to strip out. So now I'm gonna go to the top of the engine and see what taking the oil filter the rest of the way out. So you got two options. You can either use an oil filter wrench, or as you can see, this is right here, 76 millimeter or 14F oil filter wrench, and it just kind of pushes on a little bit, but not. that's just because mine, I was fooling around with other things. This slips on, you put a ratchet on the tip, and you just go to the right, and it unscrews it. So. That's one way of doing it, or just grabbing this and making sure that you turn it um, left, sorry, left, so that way, lefty Lucy. Once I get it out, I'll show you. All right, guys, so I ended up going with this trusty bugger. The reason why is the other one uh, that I was trying to use. This one would have worked, the other filter wrench, which I showed you before, but the problem is 
that uh, the person who had this before had tried to get this off, and I think they just did an oil change without changing the filter because it had small little dents in it. And because it had those and the fins were buckled in, I couldn't get it to seat until it just span on it. So all I did is I ended up, this is the one, my trusty one, which I've never had fail. And it's an alligator one. It flips out and as you spin it with a ratchet, it tightens right up. So the next thing you want to do, take this, clean up the threads with a paper towel like I've already done. But I'll show you. You're just literally cleaning it up. Take a look at them and inspect them. Look for any grains of dirt or anything inside of them. Mine look pretty good, so I'm just going to leave it like that. And at this point, all you're going to do is go put this on the back, well, back on the hole, as you can see, mine's still dripping a tiny bit, which I don't really. At this point, it's fine. So, again, take your 19 mil and a paper towel. And I'm just going to go underneath the car. The reason why I always bring a two pieces, I put this on one because you've already cleaned the threads. And then two, you can either wipe that one up or just feel for it. You can back turn and then turn, doesn't matter. Basically, all you want to do is, I'll get a little deeper so I can see this better and you can see it better. But it is on a bit of an angle, so we'll match the angle and screw it back in. Perfect. Now we just hand tighten so it won't go in anymore. Mine is right there. And then I'm going to take my trusty wrench here and just tighten it back up and see how I'm only doing this with one hand sorry there we go how I'm only doing this with one hand reason why is when I do uh, oil changes I only ever use one hand on the bolt if you need two hands to get the bolt on or well on majorly then you've got a problem that means you're just gonna strip and even one hand means you're gonna you know but this one has a biting point I've noticed and when you go to tighten it up and seal it up all you do is one hand and go to uh, right there I can only tighten that with one hand right there and don't use two to tighten this one hand I've always like I said used one hand when tightening this and that's on all my vehicles it's never fallen out and it's never stripped just be careful there we go all done washers sealed up take paper towel wipe it that way if you want to get a little bit more dirt off problem is, is it never ends ah so at this point pull out your uh, pan of oil let's see how dirty it is this looks kind of dirty but then again I don't know the detergents that were used and again I've seen some pens oil come out at like 5,000 kilometers and it looks like other oils that have come out at 500 so let's see our filter here at this point take your finger or whatever you want to use and you can either do this with fresh oil used I always use used put around the gasket you just want to make sure that it's nice and lubed up and then put it on the threads just like that threads and gasket makes it easier when putting it back in and sealing it up so at this point I'm gonna wipe off my hands and uh, we're gonna just screw in the new filter alright so as you can see got everything back all I did is I Turn it on with my hand. If it's any more than hand, then you're stripping, so don't. Uh, if you can't get it to catch the grooves, which is very rare, grab it, back turn it, and then start turning it. Once it's on here, all you're going to do is hand tighten it. I usually put on a grippy glove like so, and do it by hand. There we go. And she's nice and on there. If you go with a wrench and try and... There's people that crank them on with wrenches. I'm sorry, but don't do that. The next person, especially if this gets warm, is going to hate you. So that's as tight as I want to put mine. It's nice and good. At this point now, we need to put on 4.9 quarts or I think it was like 4.6 liters. So what I'm going to do is probably put in, say, four, four and a half 
liters and then at that point I'm going to drop the car off the ramps. First I'll check to make sure nothing's leaking, then I'll drop the car off the ramps and then I'll check the level once it's on the ground and fill it up that last little bit using the dipstick. So I usually put in about four and a half but we'll see. I'll four, anything between 4.3 and four and a half and then check your dipstick. Alright guys, I'm going to show you right about where my jug is. This is one liter. I figure that's about 4.9 quarts, so that's why I have chose the spot on my dipstick which is coming up in the next little piece here. But as you can see, this is five quarts. This is five liters. This is a five liter jug, so what I did is I tried to get about 4.9 liters in. And remember, this is higher because it comes at five liters, or in five liters. So I had to make sure that I went okay. And then I was like, that's about 4.9. But what I did is I just went off the dipstick. It's at the top. If you pull out your dipstick, let's see if it still looks good or if I'd have to clean mine off. Oh, it's basically you'll see that there's some bubbles on your dipstick or some ripples and a min and max. Just make sure it's at the top of the bubbles. That's what I did. So that's the max. Do not overfill. It's always good to be a little bit under than over. Because if it's over, then it can, you know, uh, too much pressure and whatnot. Not a good thing. So if you're a little under, leave it a little under and then just drive it around. And if you notice that it's get, you know, check it in a couple days. Make sure she's good after everything's worked in. But other than that, that's how it goes for this. It's just at this point, I've filled up. I'm just going to do this. Make sure this is my eco friendly advisor to everybody that you, uh, get rid of your oil properly. I have another old Lucas jug. This is from a different car, but uh, again, synthetic oil. I'm just going to put all that old oil in here and I'm going to take it to my local place where I can get rid of the oil filter and that. As you can see, all buckled up, all done. Right, guys, a quick thing for you since we're uh, back in the car for a second. The dipstick. Remember I told you about the dipstick? This gives you a little bit more. It's in your service manual. Basically, it tells you the bubbly part is part B. B is the area you want to be in. And you're also safe to add fluid up to A, which is above the little bubbly part. It says this is where you want to, or do not fill exceeding it, which is, you know how there's a beveled point on your dipstick? Don't pass that. Just a quick thing for you. And then, uh, of course, if you want to, another thing that I was going to show you is in your... They usually give you that leather book, which is up in here. So I pulled mine out. They've got this maintenance guide. Check this out. So I was going through this, and it basically wants you to do maintenance every 15,000 kilometers. I'm not a big fan of that. I like to do it every, uh, for oil changes, 8,500, because, well, I like to play with my GTI. I don't just grandma drive it. If you don't drive it very hard, I guess you could try and do the 15,000 intervals, but... Since this thing's turbocharged and I like it, that my turbo likes to stay cool, I want to keep my oil fresh. So 8,500 kilometers is what I do. What I'm going to do is uh, on the last page here, I'm going to start writing down my oil changes. Why? Because this allows you to remember that you've done it for one, two, you can even put the invoice number. So that way if you've got an aftermarket warranty, you've got your invoice numbers so you can look them back up in your files. All right, guys. So as you can see, I'm on the service screen. How you get here is you just... I'm going to turn the car off again and I'll show you. So you just put this on, vehicle, or, well, Volkswagen information. I'm just here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to click sideways on here. It's going to come up with this. I'll back this out a bit. So as you can see, I'm going to click down, all the way down to service. Click on service, reset. Are you, do you really want to reset your service? Okay, service reset. Back. And then we'll go back 15,000 kilometers or 372 days. We are reset, my friends. That easy. So I hope this video helped you out. Press the like button if it did. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.